Hello everyone and welcome to this week's weekly wear testing. I am excited to test out this foundation because it sounds lovely, especially for this time of year here in America. I have got the Dior Forever 24 hour wear high perfection skin caring foundation with sunscreen. This is just a mini deluxe sample that I got from Sephora in a recent order. I was very excited to see that they were offering these. Here you go. It is $52. If I counted correctly, there are 34 different shades to choose from. From what I can tell, it certainly looks focused in the light medium shade ranges. Could certainly be improved in the deeper areas. But they just say that this is going to be a medium to full coverage foundation that's going to remain flawless for up to 24 hours with a velvety matte finish, as well as an SPF of 35 in here. It's got that insane claim of being being good for normal dry combo and oily skin, I have yet to find a foundation that actually can hold up to that claim. But the highlighted ingredients are pansy and rosehip extract, both of which together will help to make the skin not dry out, leaving it soothed and looking smoother, as well as reducing the appearance of pores and protecting from external aggressors. So yeah, it really sounds like their big claims are that this foundation is going to give you tighter looking pores, it's going to enhance the appearance of the skin and just support its health day after day because of the skincare ingredients in the formula. It's gonna be comfy to wear and also comes in a glow format. You want a radiant finish. They basically just say to put this on like any other foundation and to use a brush they more specifically to work well and yeah they say we're not gonna need touch-ups throughout the day so that's exciting. Yes I think that's all I have to say for now. Let's go ahead and get you zoomed in here. Here. Boo -boo -boo -boo. Here's my skin at the moment. It's doing okay. Not the best, not the worst. It's just my skin. So it has been washed and moisturized like always. Now we can crack on into this. I don't know that I said I got the shade 1N. It's very conflicted. Okay, no safety seal. But we'll see if this works. Fill my skin color. Okay, it smells more like a foundation rather than an SPF for anyone who cares. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and put this on half of my face. Ooh, it feels very moisturizing, like in a cooling way. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I feel like that's pretty rare in a matte foundation. Mm, it's certainly perfumed. It smells very nice, like a fruity, expensive shampoo. But if you have sensitive skin like me, that is a really big red flag that you're gonna have to be checking for breakouts because of this. Yeah, I certainly think that shade works well for me, so that's good. I don't really see a medium coverage on this. They say medium to full, which makes me think, you know, in the first layer it should look medium. I disagree. I think this has a pretty light coverage, at least so far. Not that this is gonna help with coverage, but I do like to also test with a sponge. See how this does it applying. Fairly equal, definitely more of a sheer coverage as to be expected with a sponge. <sighs> We're gonna be lucky if we can get three days worth <laughs> with this little tube. It doesn't feel very full, but I will do my best. I do want to see if this can layer. So they did say it was buildable coverage, and they said medium to full, and we are far from either of those. So there we go with the second layer stippled on. I do think it was buildable. I think I got more coverage here, but certainly not a full coverage. I would say it built up to a medium. I think it looks mostly good. Definitely has that matte look on the skin, but not so much so that it looks cakey and nasty. Looks a little bit questionable in my nose pores, but overall feels lightweight and nice and smooth on the skin. So yeah, I think that's about all I can tell you guys for now. Now for this foundation, I will go ahead, put on the rest of my makeup, and get to testing this as per usual for you guys, and I will just check in with you all at the end of the night so that we can see how it ended up wearing on the first day of wear. 
I'll see you in just a second here. Ready? Ding! Hello everyone, good evening, end of the night here. It is time for me to do my final check-in for today. I am actually pretty dang pleased. This has felt super lightweight throughout the day, even though I have been hot and sweaty. Maybe you can tell that by my curls, but my hair is always very indicative of the weather. I feel like most curly haired folks can agree with that sentiment, but this felt really lightweight. It has stayed relatively matte. The only big thing Thing for me is that this definitely came off on my nose. I had to blow my nose a couple times today and each time I even like slightly touched the tissue to my face it just was it was pretty orange looking honestly the foundation color on the tissue but uh yeah it just completely came off even though it's not like I was rubbing at my nose I just you know had to push down one nostril push down the other and that was enough to get it to go completely off my nostril and it just is really obvious in my my nose pores so I'm actually pretty excited to keep on testing this for further days of wear you know with a primers and stuff see if we can fix that but otherwise I'm impressed. I'm not super excited because I really don't want to have to buy a Dior foundation if I end up falling in love with it. But as of right now, it is treating me well and I'm enjoying it. So I'm gonna go do my testing and I will just see you guys in a second and I'll let you know the results. Ready, ding, hello everyone, good evening. It is the end of the night on day three of testing and boy oh boy do I have some stories to tell. So. Let me tell you. You saw day one. Now on day two, I went ahead and I used some hydrating primers. Why? I just felt like it, I guess. <laughs> Habit. But I used my Ciate Watermelon Burst Primer on the majority of my face and then my Touch and Soul Pore Filling Primer on my nose and just in that general middle area since I felt like this foundation needed some help in the pore department. And then I also went ahead and used my Too Faced concealer. I was able to layer the foundation though and I felt like it was certainly buildable. I was also very tempted to add a white mix in medium but I didn't because I wasn't sure if I was just seeing things in that it was turning orange or that it had an orange tint to it. It was too deep for me. Well, I kind of regretted that later in regards to, yeah, this definitely has an orange cast to it, but you know, all's well that ends well. So I just went ahead and wore it as is. I thought it looked pretty dang all right on my face overall. My skin looked good. It looked matte, but you know, at the same time, it still looked natural and nice and light on the skin. It was certainly lightweight throughout the day, kind of surprisingly so. I had done a live stream that day, and if you were with me for the full two and a half hours or whatever you know I was standing over a hot stove for many hours and it's just hot in general as I'm sure you can hear my air conditioner blasting my apologies but it's hot and I think a lot of you are feeling the same way I am right now and that is hot but regardless even when I did touch my face just the littlest bit I wasn't noticing any transfer onto my fingers although at the end of the night I certainly could tell or I you know it, I couldn't necessarily feel it heavily but if I did touch my face the slightest bit or like if I dabbed at my forehead with the back of my hand I certainly saw oil on my hands so I knew I was oily but once I looked in the mirror I was pleasantly surprised because while I was seeing oil transfer off I thought my skin on my face just looked dewy and kind of nice to be completely honest it wasn't half bad there was a graceful fade to the foundation you know my nose pores were a little obvious once again but certainly not as bad as day one without primer but then as I said I certainly noticed that you know it looked pretty dead orange on me so I had a plan of attack here on day three I was excited to try this out but I certainly did not have enough to do a day of just testing this foundation that little sample was little so I had enough to do it as a mix-in which I was happy to do you know I used like a two to one ratio of the Dior foundation that I'm testing here and then I also used my CoverGirl skin milk foundation I also also used my favorite primer in the world from Guerlain I also also used my Too Faced concealer and I also used some white mix-in medium because as I've said a million times 
orange. And you guys, I thought this looked beautiful on my skin with that mixture. And after applying, I thought it looked really lightweight and natural matte, but not cakey or heavy or gross matte. You know, it just looked like nice matte foundation skin, which now that I'm saying that out loud sounds unappealing, but I think, you know, it, it actually looks fine. <laughs> and throughout the day, I mean, I've had this on for a full day of wear. I have been out and about in the world running errands, you know, mask on and off. At the end of the night here, I think my skin looks pretty dang good. Once again, my nose pores, I feel like do look accentuated, but overall, nice graceful fade, not noticing transfer onto my fingers. I don't look overtly oily. Like I am very, very pleasantly happy. Not surprised because this is kind of how things have been going these past few days of wearing, but I am a little upset because now I'm tempted to buy this foundation. Let's run over the pros and cons and see if I can talk myself out of it. So first things first, when it comes to the pros, I do like that it has buildable coverage. I feel like it said medium to full coverage. I don't feel like you could get full coverage out of this, but you can still get pretty dang good coverage and more importantly, at least to me it's buildable so you can do however much or however little coverage you want in those terms it also has a natural finish to the skin you know it's a matte finish it's a natural matte finish but overall for a matte finish I think it looks quite nice on the skin I also feel like there has to be some degree of oil control to this foundation just because I am not as oily as I typically am at the end of the night of wearing any kind of a foundation. And that being said, it has a graceful fade to it for the most part, aside from the nose pores, but we're not into the cons yet. Uh, and also with that, I feel like it's very long wearing. I don't know that it's 24 hours long wearing, but I mean, in the heat and humidity here and with my oily skin, the fact that it can last almost 12 hours here, that's pretty darn good. I have to give it that credit. And within that long wearingness, it remains fairly I shouldn't even say fairly it remains lightweight like yeah I can tell I have a foundation on but it doesn't feel heavy in the slightest it feels like a very lightweight foundation and also to go along with the long wear of it I think it's transfer resistant I don't think it's transfer proof but like pretty dang I'm I'm saying transfer resistant now for those cons first off it leans orange and usually if one shade leans orange, especially a lighter shade in the range, it usually means most of the shades are quite orange leaning. So eh, uh, not great for non-orange folks like myself. It also has a quick dry down to it. It doesn't make it difficult to apply. You just have to be aware and be sure to blend out quickly. Or, you know, if you're used to doing like dabbing your foundation onto all of your face and then blending it onto all of your face, I would just be cognizant and maybe work in quadrants rather than the whole of your face to make sure that it blends out nicely and you've got time to work with it. Uh, it also has fragrance, which eh, not a fan personally with my sensitive skin. Granted with these few days of wear, I haven't noticed any problems occur, but you know, I would just rather no fragrance was involved. And last but not least, as I said, I do think if you have larger pores, I would maybe stray from this foundation because it does with wear emphasize the pores. I think it settles in like on my, in my nose pores where my pores are most prominent. So there you go. There's the pros and cons. I don't know that I talked myself out of it, <laughs> but in any case, <sighs> there you go. <laughs> At least now you all can make an educated decision as well. I hope it was helpful for you to see this wear on my oily skin here during the summer months. I have certainly found it helpful for myself. I feel like I've heard great things about this foundation and now I think I understand why. So certainly let me know if you have tried out this foundation, what kind of skin do you have and what was your experience? Also let me know in those comments what other foundations and products you wanna see me test out in upcoming future weekly wears. You can also, also just let me know how you're doing. Also, also, also let me know if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, whatever the case may be by giving it a thumbs up down below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. You can tippity tap that notification bell down below. I don't know why that turned into a song and dance. Ugh, it's just that time of night. Anyways. 
tippity tap that notification bell. You can go ahead and subscribe. Become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye.